Hi, everyone. I'm Siobhan Sarna, founder of Chronic Condition Rescue and SIBO SOS, the author of this book. Enjoy. If you want to know about SIBO, great place to start. 20 bucks, well spent. Okay. My very special guest today is Evan Brand. And Evan is the guy who I call the third opinion guy. People come to Evan from all over the world to help them figure out their health mysteries. He's an expert in a variety of things. I met him the first time from his own summit, the Candida Summit. And uh, he's a podcast that's wildly popular. He's been talking about functional health before many of the people you know um, in the internet land um, have been talking about it. And um, he's really an expert. So one of the things that he's super specialized in is not just how to have a healthier home so that the everyday toxins from the carpet and the wall covering and the mold and all that, how to reduce their impact on you. He literally has a better or a healthy home course, which I'm obsessed with. And I've asked him about the kind of carpet I should buy the whole bit. But he also, and I think primarily is a true expert in gut health, functional testing. And the tests that he knows so much about are quite mysterious, honestly. They're complicated. A lot of people have training in them. He has training plus expertise, plus he's figured stuff out on his own with his success for thousands and thousands of patients. So what it, we're here to talk about today is how you could learn how to interpret those tests. And he's updated his slide deck. Can't wait to see that. We're going to learn a little bit about him. And here we go. Evan Brand, on you go, sir. Take over. Thanks for hey. being here. Heck yeah, Siobhan. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to jump right into some geeky stuff, guys. So buckle up, buckle your seatbelt, stay fastened, seat tray tables, all that up, because we're going to get dirty real quick. <laughs> and today, our, today, I'm going to present to you some scary but important pieces of literature in the medical journals that really display what type of trouble we are in from a neuropsychiatric perspective from a digestive and autoimmune disease perspective and autism perspective, there's a lot going on. The elderly population is suffering, the young are suffering, the middle-aged are suffering, and there's not a lot of answers from conventional medicine. There are steroids, antibiotics, topical creams, immune modulating drugs, chemotherapy, and that's about as far as it gets. I mean, the hospital cafeteria is still a mess. So I'm going to teach you some of my secret strategies that have helped me with my 20 plus years of suffering, fix myself along with my wife, my three children, as well as the 2000 plus clients that I've helped in my one-on-one -on -one functional medicine clinic, as well as the 22 plus million downloads of people that have hopefully gotten benefit from my podcast. So, so that's what we're here to talk about. And and then, of course, we'll get into some of the, the special pricing that Siobhan has convinced me to do for you guys to make my uh, education more affordable for everyone. So we'll talk about that at the end. Uh, try not to be distracted. Like This isn't a time to scroll on Instagram right now, so hang tight with us. Stay focused because this is going get, to gonna get crazy. Okay, so this is the chart that really catapulted me into natural medicine, and it was looking at the autism rates and how perfectly it matched up with the glyphosate usage. And you could extrapolate this for nearly any condition. There's charts out there for glyphosate and dementia, glyphosate and cancer, glyphosate and irritable bowel diseases. And the CDC just released a new update this week that says now this is actually already three years old before the time they release it, but they released it this week, which is that one in 36 children now have autism compared to one in 44 back in 2018. And this graph here only goes to 2010. So this is a hockey puck. Why does this matter to you if you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s and beyond? Well, because your children, your grandchildren are not going to have a future if we can't have normal people to run society, be garbage men, be doctors, be surgeons, be pilots. And these are catastrophically high numbers that is literally going to debilitate a functioning society. And I've been able to put a dent in that by reversing many cases of autism using the exact protocol and strategies today. And even if you don't have or resonate with a family member or someone you know that is not dealing with this, the same strategies we use to fix these issues are the same strategies you can use to fix your digestive issues 
your fatigue, your anxiety, your depression, your joint problems, your sex drive issues, your marriage issues, because your husband's a skeptic and doesn't believe you and thinks you're just getting old. You need to accept the list of symptoms that's piling on to you. All of these strategies are applicable to those issues. So just a couple of geeky papers, and then we'll get into some, some more fun stuff. But this is a paper discussing the neurotoxic effects of ochratoxin. Now, all of us hopefully live in homes, apartments, condos, townhomes. They have heating and cooling, hopefully with duct work, where when you press the button to turn it down to 68 at night, so you sleep nice and cool, hopefully those vents are blowing clean air. But in many cases, due to construction issues, building problems, high humidity, water leaks, water intrusion, like I'm trying to fix now in my new construction home, Big storm came in the other day, and guess what? I saw a little bit of wet drywall under my window trim. It's like, here we go again. So yeah. this affects us all. It does not discriminate. When you have water in your home, your office, your school building, mold grows. That mold farts, and it farts out these mycotoxins, which are 50 times smaller than a mold spore. Okay. And one of the primary ones that we test for and that we find in the clinic is called ochratoxin. Ochratoxin is highly nephrotoxic. That means it damages the kidneys. If you look at a chart of kidney failure in this country, kidney failure is becoming a lot more common. It's definitely linked to this ochratoxin. But in this paper here, it's looking at ochratoxin and how it's affecting dopamine. When we look at our society, we're dependent upon checking our phone. We need to click on Instagram, click on Twitter, Facebook, et cetera. We're looking for that dopamine hit. We seek out this instant pleasure from our smartphone addiction. We're becoming more dependent upon that because after running 2000 of these labs on people, the trend is everyone is low in dopamine. That means we're lacking in drive. We're lacking in focus. We're lacking in concentration. We're lacking in motivation and we get easily bored. Like if you're already bored of me and you want to like go to the next slide, I hear you, but it could be because of your dopamine being low because you're breathing in ochre toxin because you at some point in your life currently or previously, you were living or working or sleeping or vacationing in a water damaged building that had ochre toxin floating in the air and it absorbed into your body cross the blood brain barrier. And now you've got anxiety, you've got depression, you've gained 20 to 30 pounds, and you don't know why this is a big piece of the puzzle. Another paper here, this was about Alzheimer's disease, I could do a whole talk on this. And I actually will. Uh, there's a laboratory. Uh, if you're signed up for my newsletter, I'll notify you of this. I'm giving a talk with a medical doctor named Dale Bredesen. He wrote the book called The End of Alzheimer's. Him and I are doing a talk uh, really soon here with the lab to discuss this, the impact of mycotoxins and Alzheimer's. And what we found is that almost everyone that has Alzheimer's disease has a variety of fungal and bacterial species in their bodies. And this would include right here in the red box, alternaria. This is a very common mold in a water damaged building and also candida, which I'm an expert at, and also fusarium. So we know that when we see these people approaching 60, 70, 80, these neurodegenerative diseases, what happens? They go to the neurologist, they get this diagnosis, and that's about it. Maybe they get put on some sort of medication, and that's as far as it goes. Not once are these neurologists asking, hey, what about that water leak you had in your roof? Did you ever fix it, and did you remediate it? That's the questions that I'm asking. This is another paper on Parkinson's, which I won't bore you with, but the long story short of it, guess what? Parkinson's disease, same thing. All these patients that are tested, they all have candida. Fusarium, Pseudomonas, which is a bacteria, strep, like think strep throat, and many others. So what I'm telling you is when you look at what's so supposedly common or normal, you just get 80 and you lose your mind, just because something is common doesn't make it normal. And I'm here to tell you it's not normal, and you should be able to thrive into your 80s without neurodegenerative disease. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Uh, this is uh, my daughter, Summer, and our dog, Lucy, who we put her down a couple of months ago, unfortunately. Um, she developed tumors after mold exposure. And our pets are the canary in the coal mine. They're smaller bodies. The mycotoxins accumulate faster. And unfortunately, in the papers and in the literature, I understand why Lucy developed a tumor. And it's because the mold toxin that we discovered in our previous home, which is called 
zierilinone is actually the mycotoxin produced by the mold fusarium. It downregulates your tumor suppressor genes. So said simply, if you're in mold, it's literally going to turn off the genes that keep tumors under control. That's scary. And this is just one of the many, many different things that happens. There is a cancer that's becoming much, much more common called hepatocellular carcinoma. This is a liver cancer. We've directly linked this to mycotoxins. There's a paper here in the Journal of Frontier Microbiology. It's called Mycotoxin Impact on Gut Health. So I've been the gut guy for a decade. That's what I first started talking about in 2012 when I started my podcast and interviewing other practitioners on the subject of gut health. And you'll hear terms like leaky gut and SIBO and CIFO and probiotics and spore-based and soil-based and this or that. But most people, they're missing the boat on the mold. So in this paper, luckily, they put a beautiful visual for us. And what we know is that mycotoxins come into the system via food, like drinking moldy coffee, eating moldy chocolate, eating moldy nuts. We can breathe in these mycotoxins. They separate to tight junctions in the gut, creating leaky gut. It increases lipopolysaccharide, which breaks apart your gut barrier. It promotes the overgrowth of all these pathogens that you see on this bottom right-hand corner here, like H. pylori, E. coli, and many other bacteria. That's where SIBO, Siobhan and her SIBO work comes in. SIBO is a side effect, and it's a big side effect of mold exposure. Think of mold as the bad guy at the back of the nightclub. He opens the door. He lets all these pathogens move in. That's the SIBO. That's the SIFO. So now you're dealing with the bloating, the burping, the gas, et cetera. These digestive symptoms are a manifestation of something happening up north, which is this mold exposure that's allowing these bacteria to grow out of control. So if you see a guy like me or another functional medicine, naturopath type person, they may put you on herbs to address that and you may feel better, but then you relapse. And it's because you likely haven't either found the mold or you haven't successfully treated the mold. And then, of course, what happens is all your beneficial microbes, they go out the window. So now you're not producing B vitamins. Now you're not producing neurotransmitters. So what happens then? Well, more anxiety, more depression, more fatigue, more irritability. It's a mess, I know. Autism, another paper on this. Uh, there was a study looking at all of the autistic children. They compared them to non-autistic controls. And, of course, ochratoxin is in the pathobiology of autism. And it's good to see this in the literature, but I've seen this clinically far before it showed up in the paper. This was a neuroscience journal from 2019. I knew this far before this paper was here. And it's just great to have some literature to back up what I'm seeing clinically, because sometimes you think, is this real? How did we reverse autism? How did this score, it's called an ATEX score. We have all families do this, autism treatment evaluation checklist. These are kids with digestive issues and skin issues and sensory problems, and they're in trouble in school usually. It's not their fault. It's they're toxic and sick. Well, the higher the score, the worse they are. Over 100 would be severely autistic. We've seen those numbers with the proper testing and protocols, we've seen them go into single digits, meaning they no longer fit the diagnosis of autistic anymore. So you see these license plates that say autism awareness, which is great, but it really needs to be toxin awareness because that's what's driving it. And there's no way that we're just going to awareness our way out of this epidemic. We really have to fix these kids and detox them. You could screenshot this if you want, take a picture on your phone. Uh, these are signs and symptoms of mold toxicity, which is truly probably one of the biggest epidemics we're facing in modern society, just simply due to the fact that over half of the buildings estimated by the EPA are damaged by water. I bet it's 75% of homes. I tell you through Florida and my travels and many other states, there's really no state that doesn't have mold because we have indoor plumbing that leaks. We have hot showers that we love to take without the exhaust fan on. So the drywall gets moist, but these are signs and symptoms. This is not an all encompassing list, but this is a big list here. I want you to take a picture, screenshot it, refer back to this. If you have three or more of these symptoms, you likely have 
one or more mycotoxins in your body that are driving these. So it could be anything from fatigue or chronic fatigue. It could be brain fog and memory issues. It may be increased urination. You're up at night to go pee. That all could be linked to this. It's not because you're getting old. I wish it were that simple. So today you are in the right place if you want to find a solution, but you're not exactly sure what your root causes are or how to fix them. Maybe you've chased different doctors and MDs and functional people, and you just haven't fixed yourself yet. You feel like you might never get better. You have no idea how to fix yourself. If these things are true, then you're in the right place. I'm super glad you're here. Uh, Siobhan gave me an intro already, so I won't bore you with that. But I've been in the top 100 health podcasts for almost a decade, 22 million downloads, 450 episodes with all your favorite doctors and, and some of my colleagues on there. And I've been working clinically like severely intensely for eight coming up on nine years now, over 2000 cases under my belt, the cases that no one else could fix I end up with, which lucky me, but I love the pressure because it makes me a better practitioner. And we just also have a moment to note 22 million downloads. That's amazing. Congratulations. That's really changing the world. Thank you. It, it, it's probably more, but when we had to switch to a new podcast host, we lost all of our previous numbers. So who knows? But really, it, it, it's a small dent because I still see sick people everywhere I go. And so I'm like, I hopefully can make a bigger dent in the next decade here. Uh, this was uh, Keith and Michelle Norris. This was down at Paleo FX back in 2013. That's when I really got into this because I was looking at all these other people online sharing health information. This was a decade ago, which is hard to believe. And I saw the missing piece, like you have the nutrition people, which I was trained in a lot of hours of functional nutritional therapy. But then I thought like, okay, if diet fixed everybody, then why isn't everybody better by now? Like if it was that easy. And then I realized, oh, wait a second, there's things under the hood here that no one's talking about. So when I began my, my full-time online functional practice, it was primarily to help fix myself because I had suffered with long-term anxiety, depression, skin issues, digestive issues. I ran through all the doctors and they just wanted to prescribe drugs and I denied them all. I never took pharmaceuticals. Uh, I wanted to help my grandfather. He's my best friend. He's 80 years old and he was on blood pressure medication. He was gaining weight. He was tired. His motivation was low and he was like my inspiration growing up. He worked on elevators. This guy's brain was incredible and I saw him decline. So I wanted to help him. So, so a lot of this was, was selfish reasons. Um, I ended up purchasing a house that was way too big, and I don't recommend a house with seven toilets, by the way. So we sold that house. But during renovations and improving this home, I created an entire course dedicated to teaching you guys about air quality and the impact of indoor pollutants in your immune health, your asthma, your allergies, your sleep, your stress, your mood, the air you're breathing is a lot more frequent than the food you're eating, right? You may eat one, two, three, four, five times a day, but you may take an average of 20,000 breaths per day. And if those breaths are filled with VOCs, mycotoxins, pesticides, that impacts the immune system in some cases far more than the food and the water that you're putting in your body. So I, cre I created a whole course about that, which we'll talk about later. We've got a killer deal on it. Uh, I, I love doing this stuff. So I think if you are afraid that you're not going to get better, that you should let go of that fear. And can you imagine actually solving the issues? Maybe you've got grandkids you want more energy for, or maybe just your spouse, like 9 p.m. comes along and you're ready to crash and your spouse wants to have some fun with you. And you're like, honey, I can't do it. I I'm too tired. Well, I, I think we can reverse that. And, and I've saved many marriages. So in terms of symptoms, I think realistically five to 10% improvement each month is realistic for you. So whatever XYZ symptom you have right now, I'd say realistically, I could quote you a five to 10% improvement, which over a year is, is significant. And so the secret strategy is really getting your testing and getting the proper testing done. I'm going to show you some case studies to show you what the heck I'm doing behind the scenes and what do these sick people look like on paper? And then what labs do you run based on your symptoms? So if you're tired, is your blood work really going to help? Probably not, unless there's thyroid antibodies or some other issue. I'm going to show you the functional answers to your symptoms. And then the question becomes, well, what do I fix first? This guy says do SIBO. This guy says do candida. This girl says fix leaky gut. This lady says drainage and adrenals. And this guy says parasites. So what the heck do you fix? How do you sequence 
your protocol to where you can fix yourself. I'll walk you through quite a bit of that. And without a plan, your results are limited. So this goes back to the, hey, I heard on a webinar, take this spore-based probiotic. I tried it and I had diarrhea. What do I do now? No clue. And so I want to give you guys a plan, a targeted protocol is really where you get results. And you make good protocols by failing. And I've certainly had my fair shares of failure with myself. And that makes me better. The number two secret strategy is test your home, your office, your school, wherever the heck you work. If you're in real estate, I have so many realtors as clients, they're going in and doing open houses and showings, and they're in 30 houses a week and they're getting exposed all the time. You know, a lot of those homes may have an issue. So if you're in an office, a school building, a condo, a town home, it's not expensive. Okay. You're not going to go bankrupt doing this, but you have to get a workup done on not only your body, but your environment. This is the key point. You can't get well in a sick environment. Perfect diet, go to yoga, do the sauna, red light therapy, grounding, walk in barefoot. Beautiful. Great job. But if you're in a sick environment, you're not going to fully get out of the woods. So you might want to write this down or screenshot it, whatever. You have to test. Don't guess. It costs more money, takes more time to guess. Uh, Jim was a student of mine. I never talked to this guy. He just enrolled in Better Belly, which is the course I'll talk to you about in a minute. And he took my course. He ordered the testing I recommended. He cleared the mycotoxins that were sabotaging him in five months, which that's fast. And it was based on the education and the supplement protocols I gave him. And thanks again for bringing my health back. I love that. It's, I help someone without putting in labor. Incredible. And I couldn't get help from doctors. Maybe you relate because they were doing the wrong tests. Like they'd run conventional blood work, a CBC. Oh yeah. Red blood cells are fine. Your iron's a little high. Maybe donate some blood. Oh, maybe thyroid's a little low and that's it. But everything you're seeing on blood is an effect. Just like I told you, SIBO is an effect. Issues on your blood work are an effect too. Hashimoto's, thyroid antibodies don't just happen and you don't just treat the blood work. What drove the autoimmunity? What created the dysfunction in the immune system to mess up your blood? Why are you so anemic and why are you so tired? Well, maybe there's an infection robbing you of your nutrients. Why is your B12, B6 so low? You're exhausted. You can't exercise like you want to. Don't just go take B6, figure out why it's low. And that's really what I want you to do. And you're just not going to get a root cause medicine approach in a conventional office. So you have to just kind of like, as uh, Dr. I think it was Bill Davis wrote the book a few years ago called Undoctored. This guy's a doctor telling you to undoctor yourself, like unchain yourself from that conventional system. Here's the deal. When you're doing what I'm telling you in regards to testing the environment and your body, you're going to get a full look at the picture. So see here on the left, this is a nasty picture of Petri dishes that we've placed in a client's home. We found high levels of various molds, and then we matched it up to their body, which you see on the right, which is a urine test where we measure specific mycotoxins. Now, these urine tests aren't perfect, but right now it's good enough to show the tip of the iceberg. Sometimes we think we miss toxins. Other times I think we're just totally not seeing the full picture because if you're really sick, you might not be peeing all this stuff out. So really, I don't care if the testing isn't perfect. It's good enough for me to see, hey, we've got a black bar here. Like, look at this. This is called gliotoxin. This comes from the mold aspergillus, which is the most common mold in a water damaged building. This stuff wrecks your gut. It makes you fat. In some cases, it makes you skinny. It depends on the type of hormonal effect that it has on you. But this stuff causes severe brain fog. And you see here, this client, we want less than 200. They had 4,347. And then once you see it, we can say, okay, we need this binder and that probiotic to really address and fix that. We have to work on glucuronidation pathway, sulfuration, glutathione. We do other things based on these results. So we're not guessing because you're going to waste your time and money. Um, strategy three. So after you've done the proper test, Number two, you've tested the environment. Number three, now it's, well, just make a protocol. And you may say, well, like, how do I ensure I'm making the best protocol? Like, I don't want to take just what John took. I want to take what I need. How do I do it? Well, once you look through the case studies, you'll understand. 
Phase one looks something like this. You're helping to boost your digestive function. So this could be adding in supplemental HCL or enzymes. We may be opening drainage by helping you poop, hydrating you, replenishing electrolytes, adding organic foods, hopefully removing the glyphosate sprayed and other chemical sprayed foods. We're balancing out the microbiome. So that involves removing dysbiotic flora like citrobacter, pseudomonas, morganella, these SIBO bugs. We're removing those guys and then putting in good ones. And then we're improving detoxification. So that's really what it looks like. You should have more energy, better moods, and less GI distress. This is one thing I want to make clear is that people think suffering is good. Just push through, keep going, keep going. Well, if your protocol is making you significantly worse, it's not the right protocol for you. So if your practitioner says, look, just keep going, keep going, keep going, the vast majority of the time they're wrong. The body is telling you something. Pain is not just weakness leaving the body like the military says. That's not true. If you're having die off, you're having significant distress, diarrhea, headaches, whatever kind of what we call a Herxheimer reaction to your protocol, it's too high, it's too strong, you haven't supported your liver enough, there's something off. Like the protocols I'm designing, people just get better, they don't get worse. And then we go into phase two as needed. So this is reseeding the gut, possibly we're rotating the herbs to treat these bugs, we're adding in biofilm support, eventually we retest maybe after a year, any sooner than that, usually it's a waste of money. Uh, this is a case study on a little boy named Thomas, who's four years old. And if you don't have a kid or your kids are all grown up, don't worry. This still applies to you. Don't let his age turn you off. This is still important. It could still apply to you. And you could look like this on paper. So the complaints from his mother, I ended up working with this whole family. She had five children. And this woman had a large tree that had roots busted through their foundation in their home. Every time it rained, they had water in the basement. So the whole family was sick. The mother worked in law enforcement. The dad was a firefighter, just incredible people, salt of the earth people. Everyone was sick. And this little boy was top priority because he was on the verge of getting kicked out of school. Extremely defiant child, cognitive issues, couldn't pay attention, couldn't retain anything, sick all the time. And the parents suspected bacterial overgrowth. He had terrible stool, bad breath, bad skin. And this is what Thomas looked like. I'm going to run you through the labs that you should be running. And then we'll look at a protocol. And then I'll teach you how you can implement this on your own. He showed up with what's called enterohemorrhagic E. coli. This is nasty stuff. Another one called O157, 10 times higher than normal. This is a stool test that you do at home. Very important. He had bacterial overgrowth. You could call this SIBO. This test doesn't say that, but you could call it SIBO. We assume that these bacteria like Prevotella, which is a big trigger for things like rheumatoid arthritis, we assume these likely migrated up north and you could call it SIBO. I don't care about the term. Here's the thing. Your mouth to your anus, that's one long tube. We're going to fix the whole tube. So really location is not too critically important. The pathogens there are what we focus on. This is his organic acids test, and we'll look at the after in just a minute, which is mind-blowing. But anytime you see a high marker, you see those little triangles? So these are what indicate an overgrowth of a pathogen or an issue with a toxin. So in this case, number two, you see this long word here, 5-hydroxymethyl-2-ferroic acid. In parentheses, you see aspergillus. Less than 28 is normal. This poor guy, this was at age three, actually. He's a 358. What does that mean? It looks bad. Well, this means this kid has had so much mold exposure. He is now colonized where aspergillus is now spitting off these metabolites in the urine and he needs antifungals. We see more evidence of that here on number four, number six, and number seven, arabinose. This is candida. This is the gas candida produces. When I did my candida summit back when Siobhan and I met, and I guess that was 2017, the way time flies, uh, six years ago. I knew a lot about candida. I didn't know a lot about mold because I didn't realize I was sick with mold because I had never tested and looked for it. And then I found out I had it and my levels were really bad. And I do a whole case study on myself and I break down what I did for myself. But uh, back to Thomas, this is a big problem. And here's more evidence of bacterial overgrowth. All these markers here, hydroxyphenylacetic, hydroxybenzoic, these are bacterial overgrowth markers. So when you have bugs in your gut overgrowing, 
they're just pooping out these organic acids, which we can then pick up in the urine and we can infer, hey, he's got this bug based on this organic acid. You've probably heard of C. diff. If you know anything about healthcare, you hear about C. diff in nursing homes and hospitals. It kills 20,000 plus people a year. And that is a bacteria that is very difficult to treat with conventional antibiotics. In fact, the CDC's warned that we're in the post-antibiotic era. We don't know how we're going to treat it in the future. Herbs still work. I'll tell you that. This was his mold test. We ran the urine through a mycotoxin screen. Poor guy off the charts. I mean, I've seen 80 year olds that look cleaner than this. So this is just awful for three years old. We know some of this was from his time on this planet, but it was also from his mother because his mother had the same toxins in her. And we know those toxins go through the placenta. This placenta, uh, I wish it was this beautiful barrier uh, that would protect our, our you know, unborn children, but, but it's not. And the average child's born with over 100 different chemicals and toxins, not including mycotoxins. This is a protocol we made for him. We followed this protocol for about a year. I'll show you what it did in a second. Just want to break down some of the pieces of the puzzle that I'll teach you how to do on yourself or your own family members. We had some micronized chlorella to help with the mold and heavy metals. We had some vitamin C, which almost everyone who has toxins is deficient in. We had some herbal antimicrobials because we had major colonization, right? We had a bacterial problem, we had a fungal problem, and we had a yeast problem. So we had three different categories of infections. I would even put C. diff in its own category because it's such a dangerous bacteria. Four categories of bad guys here that we have to fix with the gut. We put in some saccharomyces to help with mold detox and candida balance. We put in some chewable digestive enzymes to help this kid because his digestion was so compromised due to all these infections. And then we put in a broad spectrum binder twice a day to help grab onto the toxins and then pull it out through the stool. So as long as you're pooping every day, you're in good shape. If you're not, we have to fix that. And after a year of working with this boy, parent and teachers, this kid, he's totally new. This kid's reborn. What did you do? Well, I'll show you on paper. You can see here on the dates, April 2021. Here we are, had a birthday, went from age three to four. We're talking April 2022. Look at this. Now, it doesn't take an expert trained eye to see almost all the H's except for one are completely gone. All these sky high triangles off the map are now perfectly normalized, meaning we've successfully eradicated the colonization, the candida, the whole issue of dysbiosis is totally resolved minus my perfectionist in me, this number 13. Little bit of bacterial overgrowth here, but for this timeline of just under a year, that's incredibly fast. That's amazing. amazing. This kid is transformed. So like get geeky about the numbers, but really at the end of the day, it's about the parents. These parents were on the verge of insanity to try to manage this child's behavior, behavioral therapy, speech therapy, et cetera. And no amount of therapy was going to fix this. And you can't talk your way out of this. So like if you put your teenager in counseling for their mood, it's probably not going to fix this. So this is why you need the data. And this was his retest result of his myco. So just to go back real quick, you see here his ochratoxin was a 33, gliotoxin was a 3,600. We got the ochratoxin down to 21. He's still mold toxic, still has work to do, but gliotoxin completely cleared out primarily because we fixed the candida and the bacterial overgrowth. This was his stool test. You can see we cleared out those E. coli. Both of those are gone. That's incredible. You can look here on page three of the stool test. All of his bacterial overgrowth is resolved on this. According to this, everything's back in range. There are still things on the map here, but we're okay if they're not above a pathogenic level. You can see here, even the stool test reports, undetectable levels of candida. So you're like, oh crap, well, <laughs> can I put this thing together on my own? And yeah, yeah, you can. I've done this 2000 times and I'll teach you how to fish. So you're testing, you're not guessing, you're going to get the action steps if you have the data. If you just 
shoot to the wind and go to Whole Foods and buy the probiotic. No, you, you probably won't succeed. So remember that the strategy is test, don't guess. I don't want you building a supplement graveyard. We all have one. You should see this closet in here. I've got two full Tupperwares of different supplements. Uh, you're going to save money and you're going to save confusion and you're going to save time. I mean, how much more time do you want to waste sitting here with me and Siobhan as opposed to you being out at the beach right now, riding your bike, being in the park, like, do you really want to be sitting here right now? Or do you want to be out enjoying nature, listening to the birds? Like I got two wrens making a nest on my front porch right now. Like you want to be watching the birds. So if you can fix yourself now, then you don't have to watch this next year. You'll be better by then. Uh, we go into all sorts of infections. Uh, I didn't show you all of, of what I know, but H. pylori is a big deal. I teach you how to fix that. Typically the Conventional medical doctors want to give you triple or quadruple therapy, which is three or four antibiotics. It's a very infectious bacteria. Your spouse may have it. They can reinfect you. I go into all of that, and it's it's life-changing. I mean, this is really where your gut, your mood, your sleep issues come from. Uh, this was a nasty stool test. I, I won't bore you with it. Uh, I could get geeky, but I think you've had enough geeky. So let me get more real with you, which is like, well, what about your marriage? I mean, this is typically how mold and these other issues lead to either just an unhappy marriage, a sexless marriage, or just straight up divorce. This is how it goes. Number one, it's typically the symptoms in the wife because females have more sensitive hormonal patterns and swings. Unfortunately, ladies, you guys are more susceptible to this issue. Uh, you have less testosterone than I do, and therefore you have less natural hormonal protection against these onslaughts. Okay. And so that's why typically this is a primarily a female issue, but it's affected me and many, many other men. So, so it doesn't discriminate, but we see this more in women. So step one, wife has symptoms. Step two, skepticism from the spouse can happen. Okay. The husband's like, oh, honey, you're 50. That's just what happens. It's fine. You're just getting old. Oh, this mold crap. Don't worry about honey. I'm going to just paint over it. It's fine. It's no big deal. We'll call the plumber, fix the leaky toilet and just move on. Like quit worrying about it. It's fine. You're listening to this lady on the internet. Who is she? So then they seek medical help because the wife's not getting better. She has allergies now. She has depression. She's gained a bunch of weight. Her thyroid's messed up, et cetera. And then you pile on these medical bills. So then you got this financial stress, or maybe you don't want to spend the money on digging into the home. You're like, oh, I don't even want to look there. So you stack the financial on with the medical, and then the sex life's gone because when you have these toxins, it downregulates nitric oxide. Nitric oxide helps you vasodilate. So think good erections, good blood flow to the female parts as well. When you have these toxins, you literally cannot get turned on as much. So ladies, like you're feeling like it's something with you, something wrong with you, and you know you just need to go for it. Well, no, you, you biochemically can't because you don't have the blood flow necessary for arousal because of these toxins affecting your blood flow. This is called hypercoagulation. So I'll teach you how to fix that, not only how to get your sex drive back to where it needs to be so you can have a good life like that, but also how do you fix the underlying issue that could lead to high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, you know, erectile dysfunction, low libido, weak libido, no sex drive at all. That's really the tip of the iceberg to underlying systemic inflammation that then leads into heart attack, heart disease, et cetera. So then finally we go to step six, which is divorce or an unhappy marriage or infertility or cancer, because all of these things I've shown to you today, they increase risk of cancer. All of these mold toxins affect the brain, affect the liver. We've directly linked mycotoxins to various cancers. So, so mold to divorce, that's how you end up there. And I see it every day and I've saved many marriages. I teach you all the protocols. So SIBO, IBS, H. pylori, parasites, whatever you've gone through, I've likely seen it in clinic and I've fixed it. So I have all that in the course. And of course, I want to know why you watch this. Like, what, what did you bring in here today? I wish we could have 30 minutes for each of you to speak with me and, and talk about why you, you came. Uh, I do offer... 15 minute free calls, but maybe you don't need that. Maybe you want to fix yourself. So hopefully you, you want to fix, maybe it's bloating, gas, fatigue, rashes, who knows? Maybe it's weight, pain, sleep, happiness, just motivation for life. 
maybe you're ready to take action, but you're a little scared. Well, you have two options. So you could keep going with what you're doing. You could close this out today and say, wow, that Evan guy was interesting. And now I'm back to my regularly scheduled life, not being specific with your action steps. You just heard what I said. You liked it. It turned you on a little bit, but you didn't fully go there. Or you could say, okay, you know what? This is the year. I'm sick of this crap. I want to feel good. I want to be with my kids, my grandkids, my spouse. I want to travel. I want to get on the airplane and not be afraid. I'm going to poop my pants. I mean, that was literally my story. Like my IBS was so bad. I was like scared to go to certain places. That was not a joke. That was a crappy situation, pun intended. And maybe you want to follow a step-by-step -step system like I've created. And you can go at your own pace. You could poke in. Hey, I'm going to check this out today. I'm going to check that out today. And you can poke through my brain that has been dumped into an action-based course. And so that is what we're presenting today, which is a bundle, uh, not only the home information about flooring and like Siobhan said, carpeting and all that. I'll teach you the home stuff, but really I'm going to teach you about your body. And so that's the bundle that we're going to talk about. Awesome. 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 This is really the Tina is in the chat. She's saying in this, I'm in this class now and it's so in depth and well worth your dollars. He is wonderful. Yeah. I oh, agree. thank you, Tina. Oh, you know what? So I did it. I uh, did a podcast with a, actually it's a summit interview uh, with a woman named Laura this, this morning. And uh, she runs an online health practice like me. And she said she didn't have the time to train her health coaches that she's bringing on. She just told me this this morning. She said, Evan, I literally bought your course to give it to my health coaches. So I don't have to train them. I'm like, holy yeah. smokes, that's like awesome. So that, awesome. That, that, that kind of tooted my horn a little bit, but this is Better Belly. This is the functional medicine training I've created. It took a lot of work and I'm still adding to this, by the way. Like, I don't think we're ever done. I think we're just on this journey together. And so, you know, I pray that uh, all of you can be inspired and have hope to uh, begin this new chapter, this new endeavor of solving your issues. Even if you've suffered for decades, we, we've seen remarkable success in people by implementing protocols like this. And the breakdown of the course looks like this, where you'll have individual sections, some are small, some are longer, and you can just poke through this thing at your pace, okay? You're not forced to graduate at a certain speed. You do get a certification at the end if you if that you know is, it tickles your fancy, but the real goal is do this in a bite-sized approach where you're not overwhelmed. I know I've thrown a lot at you today, but I break it down into just like this, right here, brain and mood issues, an eight minute and 36 second video where I explain to you how your brain, how your mood may be linked to your gut dysfunction. And then we talk about testing. I talk about protocols. That's half an hour lecture. We go into IBS specifically. We go into autoimmune gut diseases. We go into a whole thing on candida. I'm like the yeast expert. If you got a yeast problem, you talk to me. I'm gonna help you. This, this does include yeast infections, okay? So vaginal yeast issues, oral yeast issues, this is a systemic wide problem. We talk about that even in your pets, how your dog with candida could be keeping you sick. So that's a little cliffhanger. HCL, proton pump drugs, supplemental enzymes, we go into that. Uh, this was a testimonial about, uh, I, I don't want to bore you and read the whole thing, but let's just say people love the course. I've had a thousand students in this thing. Okay. We've refined this enough to where I'm confident everyone will love it. We've only had one person complain over a thousand that said they wanted to cancel their uh, enrollment. And they said they looked through the whole course and they just didn't like it or something generic. So luckily in our platform, we can check the progress of the student. Guess what? She never clicked on the first video. She didn't look at anything. So that was a lie. Um, but the other uh, thousand were happy. So this would also include nutrition information because I told you, you can't eat your way out of this, mm -hmm. but diet is an important piece. So I will educate you on histamine diets, FODMAP diets. What is the proper, what should you actually be eating? Because at the end of the day, that's what we're all freaked out about. Can I do meat? Do I not do meat? Green smoothie? No green smoothie. Greens powder? No greens powder. Okay. So I'll walk you through different dietary approaches and how that factors in based on your results. Because like you see this chick on Instagram and she looks so good and she's not bloated and you're jealous of her and her bikini and you're like looking at her diet, what I eat in a day, like those videos are so trendy. It's like, well, maybe she's not following what you need to follow. I'm going to help you be more specific than that. 
Uh, I could keep going, Siobhan. More course stuff. We got lots infections. of questions. We let's hit questions. questions so you. let's get let's get let's skip ahead then, Siobhan. Yeah. Uh, so so the Better Home Healthy Home course. I think I've used both names. Uh, it's it's a great course. It teaches you about EMF. I go into your Apple Watch, which is a terrible idea. Your AirPods, why it's a terrible idea. How that activates your mast cells, worsens your histamine response and food intolerances. That is geeky, but it's in the healthy home course. And Siobhan and I are doing a bundle. Better Belly sells every day at $1,500, which is a bargain. It's a fraction of what I paid for my schooling. Healthy home sells every day for 400. So you're talking give or take two grand. And um, I, I here's a little beautiful shot. How much, <laughs> how much is it really worth? Well, it's priceless. I mean, most people say it's a million dollars to, to fix these issues. So give or take two grand for both. Uh, Siobhan's convinced me to do it for $9.99. So you're saving exactly $897. And you can get both of these courses, lifetime access, which also includes future updates, which I put new videos in as I learn and see more cases. I add that to the course. So this is literally like forever access. We're thinking of switching to a subscription model. So now's the time to take advantage of this because it's a one-time thing. And next year and the year after, you're still going to be in and grandfathered into all the future content. Awesome. You know, I know only know of three people that update courses like this. Me and my SIBO course. Evan and one other person who I also um, do webinars with. So this that's a really big deal. Uh, Evan's the people are saying Tina's just in the course and she said, oh my gosh, that's a steal. Um, and Judy, I'm saying it's not just better in terms of the title. These courses protocols are the best. Thank you, Evan, for helping us find health. Thanks, Judy, for that. I really Thank you. And, and I think that's uh, Dr. Judy, who's actually uh, one of my, my coaching students too. I help her with her practice. So yeah, she's a great Thank student you. and she's, she's implemented what I've taught into her practice. And now she's getting automatic referrals. So this, this does help practitioners. It's probably an 80, 20 split of health seekers. 20% practitioners who've taken this and every single practitioner has implemented this a health coach, a yoga person, nutrition person, people who own smoothie shops. They're now just talking about this to everyone they see. And so I've actually been able to expand my reach because now I'm like cloning myself. These other people are saying, Hey, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? So that's the true viral nature of what I want to create here. Okay. Uh, people are asking questions. We got to get those questions answered. Um, but it, okay. So Evan at the checkout, it only has the better belly course. It doesn't have the healthy home. Tell us how this is going to work. Yeah. So we're going to have a link. We'll get it over to Siobhan's team ASAP. I'll check in with my assistant, make sure we have a, a you know, either a bundle link or what we've actually done in the past is my staff manually goes in and they will enroll you in the healthy home Do course. That. So, okay. Do that because well, some of my customer service people are out. So, um, okay. Bye Judy. M. So this is what's happened in the past. Sorry. The delivery page should show both, but, um, Evan, can we fix that? Cause a lot of people are going to be wanting the, watching the replay yes. and just like clicking the link from the emails and stuff. Yeah. We'll have so, it fixed. Thank you. So you're definitely getting the better belly right away. We have a customer service email, but th they can see when you've enrolled and they will send you the healthy home. Give them a day, um, mm -hmm. to, to do that. And then use code Siobhan for the the bundle here because literally Evan doesn't do this bundle and I keep saying but Evan but Evan and so I like beat him down and then he says yes so thank you for that Evan You're I welcome. appreciate it um okay so let's get some questions answered for you all from Judith I have very little HCL as diagnosed by the Heidelberg test Judy you Judith you're so lucky you found a Heidelberg test that's hard to for sure uh, for, to find um, I also cannot take tablets and capsules. So supplemented betaine HCL pepsin is no longer an option, right? And you can't open those. If you have any questions, put them in the Q and a box, everybody. How can I support my digestion? This is from Judith. Hey, Judith. Uh, well, you got to get the data, right? Because there's inf not only age affects HCL, but infections affect HCL production too. So I would start with the stool test. I would look there, get a full workup done on your gut. And then even if we don't see a mess, but we see some dysbiosis, 
we should pursue that and see what happens. Also, we have to work on your mind because if you're in a stressful environment, you've got 10 minutes for your lunch break and you're just rushing through like checking emails while eating, that's not going to create optimal digestion. So I really want to coach you on the mindset piece of this too, which is really calming your system down. I know this whole uh, talk today is very sympathetic, like, ah, but ooh, we have to downshift when we eat because our ancestors were sitting on an edge of a cliff looking over untouched forest while eating their bison meat. And we just don't do that. So we are at a disadvantage with our modern pace of life. So you literally have to like put the blinders on, chew, chew, chew slowly to encourage the body. You can even fake moan if you want. That's what I do. My kids think it's hilarious when I eat a nice piece of meat. It's like, mm, that is so good. You all like that? Mm. And I tell my body, look, this is food. This is nourishing. And I feel better. If I just eat in a rush, I get up from the table and I'm like, did I even eat? You guys ever do that? You get it from the table. Like, what yeah. the heck? I need a piece of chocolate now. Well, you were just likely not fully embracing the food. So it's mind, but it's also infection. So I hope that helps. Um, Evan, go ahead and go full stream, scream of your little face. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Everybody, please come into the Q&A box with your questions because I have a lot of questions. I need to just stare at that one box. I got time, Siobhan. Let's hit them. Okay. I have a heart out sooner rather than later. So James, what diet and what supplements cure leaky gut, SIBO, inflammation, eliminate worms, parasites, mold, and any other negative impactor of health? Ah, that's a lot. What's best way to balance gut pre, pro, and postbiotics for perfect immunity? So mm -hmm. just give us some tidbits on that. Uh, a lot to unpack. That's a, uh, you know, three hours of, yeah, of lecture, a, a but, uh, but in 30 seconds, it's find the infections creating leaky gut, find the toxins damaging the, the barrier. We talked about that, how glyphosate, mycotoxins, other things, heavy metals from mercury fillings, those all disrupt the gut barrier. Okay. So to, to fix leaky gut, there's a, a, a prefix, right? Which is uh, well, you got to remove the crap damaging the gut before you even get to gut healing and glutamine and all these magic leaky gut supplements like that's step two, man, you got to go to step one. What the heck is causing the gut issues? That's where we start. And then in regards to diet, well, it depends because I need to look at your labs first. There's case studies where I use different diets, but the, the real answer is less toxins. So organic as right. much as possible. Like don't even touch a non-organic strawberry. You go to a little tennis party and they got strawberries on the table. They're not organic. Don't touch the strawberries. It's not worth it. 22 pesticides on average in a strawberry. What oh does that gosh. do? It damages the good microbiome. It damages the beneficial microbes in your gut, creating dysbiosis, creating all this other stuff. I got to keep going, Evan. The okay. thing is, is also uh, like I went to this tulip farm. It was so cool. We could pick your own tulips. Well, David and I felt so sick after we had this lovely morning. The whole Oof. thing was covered with glyphosate. Oh, crap. moving on. I know it was terrible. And you've got to check to see if your house has mold. You have to with all that going on. All right. I'm going to move on because I got to get to everybody. Does the course, do the courses include any testing? And if they don't, how can we get a hold of those tests to do? The enrollment is just the enrollment. You're paying for the education, not the courses. Those are ordered separately the from the labs. Mm -hmm. And my staff can help facilitate that. As a student, you have direct access to us, communication with us. If some people just take the course. Some people say, I need to get the labs. I want to do it. I'm ready. They contact us. We'll sign off on it for you. We'll get the kit shipped to your house. You do the kit, goes back through the mail. We get results. My staff emails you those immediately. You can then go back to the course, work through your labs, or I do still do clinic three days a week. If you need further help, I am available for hire for a la carte consults. Okay. And how long is your waiting list? Uh, I don't have an official waiting list. I'm officially booked out two to three months on average, but I have yeah. appointments that open up in between. So we could try to get you yeah. in as quick as possible. But just to be super transparent, you would be paying for that separately. You are paying for the test separately. Again, That's right. This is your your um, education is this special bundle. Yes. Uh, do you use Cellcore products and do you use Quicksilver Scientific? 
Uh, Cellcore is good. Uh, that's a buddy of mine, Dr. Jay Davidson. Uh, we've done many fun things together. I do know Jay. I do know his products. I do sell those products. I do cover some of that in the course using some of his. Uh, Quicksilver, I know him too. That's Chris Shade over there. And uh, we've talked with Chris. I, I like it. However, there's a lot of ethanol in the Quicksilver products. For people with histamine, mast cell issues, we stay away from ethanol. But there are some cases where we'll bring in things like for the liver, for detox function. It's a, it's a case by case. Uh, okay. Are there handouts in the course? So yeah, there, yeah, yeah, there, there are handouts. There's also yeah. protocol sheets. There's PDFs that you'll have access to. So if you're designing a protocol for yourself, or if you have clients or people you're working with, you'll be able to take my templates and then tweak those. What I like about it is you get to uh, be a little bit more in charge and you learn the information that you can then help yourself into the future, right? Like I've had oats tests, the organic acid urine tests, multiple times. I do not know what those mean unless I'm learning from Evan, right? Like, uh, or if I go to, I am actually actually going to become a nutritionist, Evan, to learn and learn functional testing. But at this point, I'm not there yet. So this is like a, like you said, teaching one to fish. It keeps going. This is not just like a one and done. And a lot of times getting in with practitioners, you know, I'm, I, you're rushed. You want to, anyway, you all know this. I don't need to tell you all that. Um, okay. Myra, uh, can you be hyper and still have mold problems? Hmm, hyper? Hyper. Oh, like maybe she's saying like energetic, like I'm like revved up. Heck yeah, you can because yeah. you're stuck in fight or flight. Now, eventually yeah. you may crash and burn and you'll become chronically fatigued. But certainly I've had tons of clients and I've suffered personally agitation, irritability, those sort of excitability type symptoms. You're very chemically sensitive. You're reacting to people's fragrances and laundry detergent, this hypersensitivity, this alert, alert danger. Yes, you can be stuck in that state as well. Okay. Dr. Flores, I'm going to text you. I'm going to private message you right now um, because I asked your question of Steve Wright, my friend who has holozymes and is an enzyme expert. So I'm going to keep going here and see what you have to say about what he said. So I am having severe skin issues, breakouts, dryness, inflammation. After everything I eat, even when I'm 100% clean, I take L-glutamine, aloe, megaspore probiotic, eat fermented foods, avoid gluten, dairy, sugar, use an infrared sauna, everything we're talking about. I suspect leaky gut reaction. What testing do you suggest for this? And could it be mold related? Of course it could. Yeah. Uh, get the urine and stool we looked at today. Let's see what you look like. I guarantee there's an issue. There could be a toxin issue, driving dysbiosis, therefore driving skin issues. I don't market myself as, I'm not a dermatologist, but I don't market myself as a skin expert, but I will tell you that I have, in, in the old slide, Siobhan, you remember we had a slide of a girl who had insanely terrible acne, and just awful skin and we fixed it. So we fixed many, many, many oh, skin that. issues yeah. as a side effect of fixing what we're talking about today. Uh, let's see. Is there a discount code for your products like the Aura Roots products? I don't uh, right now we don't have anything because I don't know how to fairly do that for students versus clients. It kind of becomes a customer service nightmare. So all I will say is at this time, no. However, I am debating on creating like a VIP club where people get more access to me, where there'll be a discount code each month where we do like a one hour talk together as a group. So in the future, there might be something like that. But right now, no, I will say everything I'm creating is not consumer grade. These are professional grade. I only have access to these manufacturers because of my healthcare credentials. So I'm not selling you Amazon quality product. I'm selling you professional through a practitioner grade product. And it's very clean. The other thing is, remember guys, when you have a hard goods product, it's a lot more expensive. Like it's a lot easier to do a discount on a digital product than to do it on a hard good product, which is, I know what we're talking about here. Um, Evan, if people do go and get the testing through you to answer David's question here, are they, um, are, do, are the prices of the tests uh, competitive? Like, you know. Yeah. So cer certain uh, labs are a fixed price where the price is the price. There's nothing we can do. And then others, there's bundle prices where when you stack on say chemicals, mold, glyphosate, you get a discount on those as you bundle those together. There are other third-party labs that may undercut us and actually go below the MSRP so they can shop around if they'd like. But we do to generally follow like the MSRP set by the lab. People have posted in the Q&A box um, about how much do you charge for a consult? 
Uh, well, at the time of the recording for my, for me, uh, 499 for the initial consult. And then we built a la carte for like half hours. And then I have another practitioner on staff who I've trained and she's 299 for the initial. Okay. So, you know, this is options for you, everybody. How, how much treatment, when you had that child case study, uh, Dan is asking, how much did the treatment vary over that year or was it consistent over the duration? Oh, yeah, great question. So there were actually a couple other protocols that we rotated through. Uh, I reveal his full case study, I give you the full long winded approach, like, hey, we did this phase one, this phase two, etc. And I break all that down. But in general, we're following a protocol, give or take three, maybe six months. And then we likely rotate that or update that protocol. People, um, some people already have the healthy home course, and they want to know how much the better belly course would be and vice versa. So I'm just sending them to your customer service and you guys can figure that out. Okay. Sure. I mean, if, if they've already got healthy home, uh, better belly sells all day, every day at 1500. So you're still getting a killer deal. You're still getting 500 off. So if you've already enrolled in one of my courses, first of all, thank you. I'm so grateful for you. If you don't already have better belly, you're getting a steal. I don't do any other sale outside of Siobhan. So I would take advantage of that price. Okay. All righty. Um, my Kevin, my wife has liver cirrhosis and was diagnosed with autoimmune hepatitis. Through my research on PubMed, I found some useful info regarding the gut. My question is, would this program be helpful in a situation or would this condition need more one-on-one -on -one attention? As you said earlier in the webinar, we've been through the gamut of the celebrity doctors in this area with limited success. Yeah. You know, that's a complex case. You know, I don't have enough time to fully break it down for you. I would say I could take a look. Uh, you, you may be a case where I'd like to see you one-on-one -on -one and give you some other things because uh, this is not a cancer course or a cirrhosis course. And those complex issues like that, sometimes it, it requires a little more handholding. Okay. Um, I did see one question that popped up. Uh, someone just wants the home course. You can just yeah. enroll off the home course right now is price 399. That's last year's price. So okay. if you'd like to just get the home course, you can. Okay. Uh, is that on a link where they can get uh, it? If they go on my site, just evanbrand.com under the courses tab, you'll see the options. Okay. Do you need to heal the gut before you start detoxing mold for kids? Uh, well, that's a controversial question. Everybody has a different answer. I will say this. Generally, it happens simultaneously because the infections can slow down and affect detox. So this is a whole nother lecture, so I'll make it quick. Bacterial overgrowth messes with an enzyme called beta-glucuronidase. When that enzyme is high, you have issues with detox. So we have to fix that enzyme to make that pathway work better so that detox works. So that's kind of the order we do it in. Okay. Um, I'm supplement sensitive to supplements, sometimes taking little bitty t amounts to, um, to titrate up. Is that a problem or do you address, and do you address that in the course? Uh, I, that used to be me. You probably have some level of what's called MCAS or mass cell activation, where you're either having paradoxical reactions to supplements and, or you're only able to tolerate tiny doses. That's typically driven by underlying infections like Lyme, Bartonella, Babesia, and, or mold. So if you work through those root causes, your sensitivities will decrease and you can take normal doses. So yes, I do have the sensitive snowflake dosing information in there. And I'm actually, you know what, that inspires me. I'm going to do a whole nother lecture on that because I used to be the guy who could only take a quarter of a dose and now I could take double a dose and I'm fine. Nice, 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 nice. Okay. Uh, when in the class, do you work with people individually? So what is, I want to be very clear about expectations. You get the course, you can buy the test through Evan, you can shop around as well. Um, we even have like on Rupa Health, we have some tests available, but you know, do your due diligence on all that. Evan, how much are they going to be talking to you during the course? Nothing. There's not, no, a, not, not, not at, at all. all. You, you won't talk to me like this, but you'll be talking to me as in you're going to be vibing with me just like this, because I'm talking to you like this. I'm running slides through you. Uh, I have quizzes that you need to pass to get to your next section. So I'm going to keep you on your toes. So it is very interactive, but me live with you in the flesh. There is none of that. I told you earlier, I was uh, debating and many people have requested uh, all the students have, have agreed that they would love to join a like monthly meetup where, I mean, who knows, we could have 200 people show up, uh, all the students and we share labs and we share protocols. That doesn't exist yet, but that will be 
like a subscription add-on. I'm just working on the details to make sure I don't overcommit and spread okay. myself too thin. But yeah. that is a that is going to be a more like one-on-one option outside of the one-on-one consults. Because I've noticed in the group setting like this, the vibe just elevates. Everybody helps each other as opposed to me repeating myself to the same person. You know yeah. what I mean? Five different oh, times. Yeah. So, so oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I've Mark, I've had IBS for over 40 years and tried everything, including several diets, including the latest low FODMAP. I also have all the traditional IBS symptoms and had a colonoscopy and several tests. What kind of tests, Mark? Um, do you think the course can help me? Of course. Oh, yeah, I do too. But listen, Mark, when you, when people say they've tried everything, I want to speak to that for a second because mm. I get that Evan's the third opinion guy, right? So I also felt like I tried everything. I had not tried everything. So I'm interested in what other tests you had done, but I definitely think that this test would give you, this course would give you a lot of great information. Sorry. Thanks. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And and I hear that every day, all day. Uh, I spend two, three hours a week talking to people doing 15 minute free intro calls that people can book with me. And everyone says that, Hey, Evan, I've been to 20 doctors. Are you sure you can help? I'm like, haven't let anybody down yet. I'm sure we can move the needle. So yeah. Okay. Shop around. I'm, okay. I'm stubborn. If people haven't picked that up, I'm like, I don't take that. You can't get fixed. I don't accept that answer. Like I'm always going to try to help you. Okay. Um, right. Uh, we did this one. That's awesome. I have Dana. I have a recent Dutch test oats and mycotoxin results. If I was enrolled, uh, She's saying, would you provide a plan for me based on these? But you'll be able to provide your own plan, Dana, because that's what the course does, is it teaches you protocols based on your results. Is, am I saying that right, Evan? You are saying that right, Siobhan. We do cover the Dutch test. Uh, it's it's good. There are some downsides to that test. We do cover other types of adrenal tests. That's what uh, for people listening, that is a, an adrenal test. It looks at hormones and cortisol rhythm. We do discuss that. We do talk specifically about adrenals and the role of adrenals in your gut health and mitochondrial function. Uh, there's not like click here to generate your protocol. It's not like that, but you're going to be looking through cases, seeing what else people are dealing with. And you're going to go, oh, look, she looks and sounds just like me. Here's what he did to fix her. Wow, there we go. And then you implement it in that way. But if you do want the hand holding, you know, that would be outside of the course. I could I could do that if needed. Uh, and that's for a fee. Again, full transparency. What about intermittent fasting for a gut reset? Yeah, it's in the course. We talk about nutrition. We talk about fasting. There are some positive benefits. There's also some negative benefits to fasting uh, in terms of certain adrenal issues, thyroid issues, and others. So fasting is a stress. And uh, we, we go into that. Like, are you a good candidate for it? How much should you do it? How often? We kind of break that down. And then um, I've got serious mycotoxins as tested by G Great Plains Lab Myco. Can I use mushrooms like reishi or tremella mushroom supplements from Susan? Mm, you know, mushrooms are to me, not a huge deal. We've used medicinal mushrooms like lion's mane for post virus, like loss of smell issues. We've used chaga and turkey tail and reishi for histamine and food intolerance and immune health. So uh, it's been a great thing. I, I love mushrooms. And I, I believe, can't say right off the top of my head, but I believe we've discussed some mushrooms in some of the protocols. I personally take medicinal mushrooms and I believe them to be a great value. What is the, okay, do you send your supplements as well as mold tests to Canada? Hey, Solania. We do. And your Canadian government will charge you some import fees likely as well as Europe. I have tons of clients around the world. So certain foreign governments do charge some import duties. So just full transparency on that. But yeah, we ship to Canada every day, all the time. Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, London, it's fine. Uh, Leandria, how long would you typically do your protocol before retesting your lab tests? That's so individualized, but how can you tell when to do Yeah, yeah. Uh, I briefly mentioned that earlier during the talk. Give or take six to 12 months is how long we'd wait before retesting. Otherwise, it's too soon. It's a waste of money. Uh, protocol, we're generally following a protocol three to six months, and then we're rotating through different herbs, different antimicrobials. And if someone is really sick or there's autoimmune issues or there's intestinal bleeding, okay? So I need to just get serious for a second. If there's intestinal bleeding, Occult blood shows up, major calprotectin, high gut inflammation, potential risk of cancer in the colon, autoimmune, gut disease, 
may need to do colonoscopy at that point. So there are certain red flags that you need to know about that we talk about where that's in the autoimmune uh, section of the course where I'm going to say, Hey, like, look, this, this is beyond do it yourself. Now we need to get some outside help. Blood. No good. No good. This is not medical advice. Honestly, this is educational information. And then you're going to be able to get some data. And so this is not a replacement for colonoscopies, doctor's appointments, that kind of thing. It's like, it's like a carrot and a celery. They're both vegetables and they're both wonderful. It's just, they're same and different. Okay. Um, that was the weakest analogy I've done all day, but it was okay. Okay. Uh, is it possible to live with H. pylori? I'm trying to avoid taking antibiotics. Aren't there natural things you can do for that? Yeah, I got a whole section dedicated. H. pylori is one of the biggest smoking guns out there. 51% of the population has H. pylori, extremely contagious. When it becomes too high, it's an issue. It can be commensal. The question was, can I live with it? Yes, of course you can live with it. Can you thrive with it? If it's not at a high level, yes. Sometimes during the protocol, we see H. pylori completely disappear on the retest, which we celebrate. But at a low level where it's not high, we're also okay with that. Okay. Uh, simple, quick answer, Kat. What does high secretory IgA mean? Uh, secretory IgA high would indicate the immune system is pissed off. It's likely fighting some infection, viral, bacterial, fungal, immune system is going haywire. Watch out. A halitosis, bad breath is gut and mouth microbiome. What else do you, do you address there? Uh, yeah, so bad breath is definitely linked to the oral microbiome. So we look for gum disease, receding gums, uh, periodontal disease of any kind, plaques, uh, cavitations, root canals. I mean, there's a lot of oral health stuff. I have done several uh, dentist interviews where we go into that. But truthfully, a lot of your mouth issues are connected to your gut and vice versa. This oral gut microbiome, it's a, it's a two-way street. You know what? Anybody who picks this up, this bundle today, like it's 412, like in the next 15 minutes, I know it's not a quick decision, but we've been on here for an hour and 15 minutes. There is a masterclass by Dr. Steven Sandberg Lewis that talks about the oral microbiome connected to the gut. And I will throw that in for anyone who's already bought during this webinar and anyone who buys through um, the next 15 minutes. So 430, next 18 minutes. So Clarissa, can you tell the team? I'm sorry. I just thought of that. Thank you. Love you. Bye. Okay. So <laughs> it was just, um, you know, the one it was in the dental uh, health connection summit and the whole body dental healthy connection summit. Okay. Thanks, Clarissa. Uh, it's a good one. Steven Sandberg Lewis wrote the book on functional gastroenterology. He's been a functional gastroenterologist for 40 years. Amazing. But this is so important to all of this. Okay, Sonali, I have hydrogen SIBO, a lot of burping and belching, my Crohn's IBS stool test, celiac, pancreatic elastase, fecal fat, Crohn's all negative, no mold around, digestive enzymes and natural laxatives and diet does, does help, but my lifestyle is very restrictive. I get that. What would you recommend that I test for a diagnosis? You already saw it, honey. Yeah, honey. Get it done, baby. Uh Jokes aside, yeah, I mean, get the data, even if you've had these before, get updated, get fresh ones to see. Uh, I love that you're geeky and smart. I love how geeky these questions are. This is a good crowd. So uh, I think you're barking up the right tree here. I think we've got something to to help smooth you out here. Uh, yes, mold could give you bad breath. Honestly, it really could. Oh, yeah, you're actually excreting mycotoxins through the breath. So uh, if you feel really bad around some people, it might not just be their energy, their mood, it could literally be that they're toxifying you in the same way that we know that people with mercury feelings actually excrete mercury into the air. So if you got like a family member living with you staying with you for a month in your house, they're actually putting heavy metals into your home as well as mycotoxins if they're breathing them out. And so yeah, that's pretty crazy. What is the what is the mycotoxin or parasite that could be affecting hyperthyroidism? Uh, well, any and all of the autoimmune triggering bacteria. We have a whole section on autoimmune bacteria. That's page three of the stool test. We look through all those gut bugs, but any and all Citrobacter, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, Morganella, any of these pathogens can disrupt the immune signaling, which can then create either Hashimoto's, uh, Graves, et cetera. So there is a gut thyroid link that we discuss. It's very important. Guys, um, 
you can email us. I, I'm trying to make it easy for you. Um, email us at info at SIBOSOS.com. Clarissa just put it in the chat so we can get you that masterclass from Steven Sandberg Lewis. But also we'll check in as the week goes on. Uh, well, no, it's just happening today. What am I talking about? This is not going in an email. I'm not going to be saying, I changed my mind. You can still get it. No. So if you're here for the next 15 minutes, but Evan, if people did buy the course already and left, I'm going to be reaching out to your office to find out their names and emails address so we can send them that. that yeah, class. we'll take care of them. I'll have Ann work on that for you. Okay, thank you. Clarissa, can you help me with that? Um, okay, would this course be helpful for a parent whose child has pandas? Hey, Judy. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, I've had personal experience with pandas uh, with my kids because they've had tick bites, they've had mold exposure. Yeah, it's no joke. Uh, I'm actually going to put that on my list. We talked about adding another section for like more sensitive snowflakes. I'm actually going to make a note to myself now that we need to do a pandas pans case study because I have those. I think there's actually some in the course already, but I learn more and more about pandas pans every day. Uh, for those listening, that's an autoimmune issue that affects children where the it could be caused by strep in the case of pandas, but also mycoplasma, Lyme, mold, Epstein-Barr, any issue that comes into the system. If a dysregulated child has bugs move in the immune system goes oh i want to hit that bug but then it hits the brain so then they get sensory issues and they're crazy and it's scary and it's not pretty let's talk about sugar we have several questions about sugar um not tolerating fruit or sugar so you may be fructose intolerant a lot of times when you clear SIBO the fructose intolerant also clears by the way is it reversible is there hope once you treat the bacteria well, here's the thing, you know, there's this big thing out there, like we talked about it in the Candida Summit years ago, like Candida diets or mm -hmm. FODMAP or SIBO diet. And, and here's the reality. I have people eating donuts and chocolate milk that still succeed with the protocols. So is diet important? Yes. Is it enough to where you need to go so crazy that you've now given yourself an eating disorder and you never go out with your friends anymore and you've sabotaged your... Uh, relationships to stick to some perfect diet you think you need to follow that's that's a problem i mean you you need to be a normal functioning human so i i'm not going to say hey go eat cake and pizza and ice cream tonight but i'm going to say that you don't have to be perfect and you can still fix these issues stephanie uh is there a generated protocol based on lab results telling us what supplements to take that's really what the pro it's not like it goes into a computer and then it spits it out this is Evan saying, if this is what your test says, this is something you can do for it and build your protocol that way. Is that correct? Precisely, Siobhan. There's no okay. click here, AI generated. We don't want a computer telling us what to do. You want a guy who's come up the mountain 2000 times and that's what I've done. And so this is better than a click and then it generates it. This is like, hey, here's what you need because the lab is not, it's not perfect. You want a human who's seen it. Like it looks like this, but we should actually do this. I'm going to coach you through that. Um, I can start. I can't start my day until 2 p.m. due to severe diarrhea. So my day is much longer and I don't sleep. I've had a colon resection due to diverticulitis perforation. I'm so sorry. And 10 years later, a small bowel resection due to mesh mash that ate through my small bowel and abdominal wall. Now I can't leave the house. My diet is clean. It's not just about the diet, my friend, and non-GMO. I eat under 1,200 calories a day and keep gaining weight. It's interesting. Any ideas? Oof, what a mess. My dad had a bowel surgery also for diverticulitis. That's why I'm so passionate about gut health because I want to save my intestines. And yeah, this is a complex case here, right? So you, you may need some hand-holding and yeah. you may never, here's the hard truth. I got to tell you this. I'm not you know, going to play God here. But with those level of surgery and resections and stuff, you may never 100% optimally function with your GI. There could be some issues. I think we could stabilize you and reduce the symptoms. But when you start cutting stuff out of you, yeah. it's, it's difficult because that's where water gets reabsorbed, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of processes that happen in that beautiful uh, digestive tissue there. If you can pull off an appointment, I would suggest that. But then also um, take a look at the elemental diet. What do you think about that? As an, as a, it's so big. I'm just throwing that out. Yeah, I mean, I've had people do like these elemental powders and stuff, and I haven't seen it to be a miracle cure. No, it it is for some SIBO cases. I'll tell you that. Uh, cool. But it, everybody's different. Okay, okay, okay. Got it. Um, 
so that means he will tell us in the course it's in the course it's in the course you do not have a personal consultation with him it's in the course um but literally a thousand people have gone through this course and only one person wanted to return it and that person didn't even open it so he's figured out a system within the course okay i want to move on from that um got it you stephanie you don't have to figure it out on his on your own you're right it's in the course okay we have 10 more minutes can leaky gut be healed while still working to clear mold mycotoxins um I'm, I can't say L-glutamine is the best for this healing. It's a thing that I know, Evan, you like, but there's more to it, Angela, than that. But can leaky gut be healed while still working to clear mold mycotoxins? You can start to heal it. Can you fully heal it as in like you had a hole in your genes and you perfectly sewed that hole up while you still have pathogens and toxins? I don't think so. I mean, really the goal is to be functional. So like, if you're feeling better, you have less symptoms, less food reactions, et cetera. That's what I care about. Like this perfect hundred percent ceiling. I, I don't know. I don't know. And, and I don't care because I want you to, to feel great. And so at the end of the day, function is the key. If there's still pathogens and toxins in you, will you fully heal it? Probably not, but can you get it to where it's a non-issue and doesn't impact your life? Yeah, for sure. Okay. I've been detoxing mold and I have SIBO. I've been given rifaximin and neomycin. I'm nervous about the neo. Can I take an herbal instead of with the rifaximin for the methane SIBO, which is what you've been given the drugs for? And how do I rebuild the gut after killing off the SIBO? My argument would be you don't need the rifaximin. This isn't medical advice. I'm not your doctor. I'm not treating you. This doesn't establish a doctor-patient relationship. However, many people have done Rifaximin before they get to me. And guess what? They still have issues. So I would argue the herbs actually work better. The question was, can I do, you know, drug and herb? Uh, I would argue you don't need the drugs because I've had 2000 cases where I don't prescribe. I'm not a medical doctor and we fix them without the drugs. And in fact, I would argue some of these antibiotics appears to cause a relapse in people where we see it do a little something, something, and then we retest and then, oh, strep, staph, whatever, it's back. So uh, plants and the herbs are different. They have different alkaloids and terpenes. It's not a just a single approach. There's so many different nutrients in there that we're using in these blends we formulated that you don't have resistance, meaning you can get well and stay well. Okay, I'm going to go for people I haven't had a chance to get answers to. Um, what? Uh, da, 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 what's the easiest way... Oh, to get the labs in the UK. Uh, we have a UK distributor actually that we use. And so that would once again, just be through our process. As you, once you're a student, you have direct access to it. My staff will get in touch with our UK distributors and we'll help you. And uh, when it comes to mold testing in the UK, what do you do for that? Uh, actually, we can ship the same testing that we do in the States to UK. We've done that for many clients. Uh, in some cases, due to shipping fees and due to the timing of it, we actually tell them to test at home and we provide the test to do it at their house and not send it back to a lab. What do you do about binders with constipation? That's a bad combination. Uh, yeah, great, great point. You got to poop. So there's a lot of things we do. We fix the bugs that disrupt motility. We use specific nutrients to help the brain gut communication because a lot of pooping is happening in the mind in, in the brain and vagus nerve and sympathetic parasympathetic balance. And once we fix bugs, though, a lot of constipation resolves. We do have, quote, natural band-aids. We may increase vitamin C, magnesium, et cetera, but those are not root cause. So we, we try to fix the bugs that mess up the motility. Okay. Uh... Let's see. I've had excellent results healing leaky gut with small doses of frozen aloe or aloe uh, vera fillet pieces. Any opinion on this? I believe whole food sources trump powders every time. So what's the question in there? Did I miss it? Uh, what do you think about the al al aloe? Al oh, 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 yeah. So we, we have a formula. It's called GI Soothe number two. It's way more potent than what you're going to buy because it's a 200 pound vat of aloe that we convert into one pound of extract. So it is insane. That's what we use. You'll see it in the autoimmune case studies about Crohn's ulcerative colitis. It is incredibly soothing to the gut. So um, sure, do fresh aloe, awesome, but the extract is, it's, it's potent. 
Uh, what about charcoal for detoxing uh, from mold? That's Heck yeah. Yeah, yeah. Part of the protocol. It's uh, yeah. part of the broad spectrum. Charcoal is gentle. There's other things you may need because charcoal doesn't work for all mycotoxins. Mm -hmm. Charcoal works great at ochre toxin that we talked about earlier, but it doesn't work great for zeolinone. So we have different binders for different mycotoxins. Uh, is this test, I think, course for both patients and practitioner, or is there something specifically for practitioners? This is uh, not dumbed down or uh, smarted up. It's for everyone. It's about an 80-20 split right now, 80% health seeker, 20% practitioner. Uh, practitioner specific course I do have called Confident Coach, but that's more about building a practice. It's not so much the uh, functional training. Karen, you can get the test. Can can Karen get the test in Australia? Guys, uh, Clarissa, can you put the link in the chat one more time? We have five minutes left if anybody wants to do this and get the masterclass from Dr. Steven Sandberg Lewis, in addition to the Better Belly course and the Better um, the Healthy Home course, all in one, lowest price anywhere. I like totally, Evan's like, could we do this? I'm like, no. Could, what about? No. Okay. Um, Australia. So, yes. Yes. I have clients in Australia. I love my Australian clients. Good day, mate. And uh, yeah, we, we test Australian clients all the time. So no problem. Could having H. pylori cause long-term brain lesions? I don't have a clue. Brain lesions and H. pylori. I'd have to do a PubMed search. I don't have a clue. Is H. pylori good for your brain? No, because mm -hmm. it's robbing you of your nutrition via downregulation of stomach acid production nutrient deficiencies, got to have nutrients for your brain. So I don't know, brain lesion sounds like a stretch. I, I can't confirm. Judy, he did say, uh, my interpretation of what Evan said, and based on the case study, Judy wants to know, will this be helpful for a 14 year old boy who has pandas and was diagnosed at age five? Yes or no? Yeah, we have teenagers in the in the, uh, in the course. There's case studies on teenagers. And as long as we get them to be compliant, the trickiest part about teenagers is do it. Do the protocol. Yeah. Don't run out to Del Taco and order 27 tacos with GMO corn. You know, we, we got to get the teenagers on board. Uh, I love working with teenagers, though. If you can change these guys and, and help them at, in their teenage years so they don't have to suffer through their 20s like I did, it's amazing. They do better in college. They become more successful in their business, their entrepreneurial, whatever. Like, fix the teenagers. We got to. Is there a potential relation between bowel control, MS, and Evan's work? Uh, yeah, bowel control. Some of it is brain gut infections, MS, autoimmune related to infections. Yeah. I mean, we have tons of autoimmune MS, RA, Hashimoto's people that enroll. Is it common to see a lack of oxygen with gut issues or does that sound like an underlying cause? Hmm. Lack of oxygen is no good. We would call that, uh, you know, hypoxia. Also, you'll see that related to uh, what is called hypercoagulation, this thicker blood, sometimes related to the virus, sometimes related to the injection, sometimes related to Lyme and tick-borne illness, and also mold. So uh, I do have a whole section on the virus and gut health, and I don't know if I reference low oxygen, but I definitely reference hypercoagulation and what we do to fix that. Okay. Guys, thank you for being here. I tried to whip through as many questions as possible. Siobhan, this was the longest Q&A we've ever done. I, and, I we, and we kept literally like everyone here, like no one left. So it must be enthralling. Thank you very, very much, Evan. Thank you thank all you. so much. I really appreciate your time. It is, it is just a, an honor for Evan and myself to share this information with you. It's not a fit for everybody, but if it, it's not a fit for everybody, and yet, if it is, we're glad we can share it with you at a discount. And at the very least, I hope you got some inspiration today. I see a lot of the orders coming in. So thank you. Give them a couple of days to get you that healthy home course. Give us a couple of days to get you Dr. Steven Sandberg Lewis's masterclass about the connection between the oral microbiome and the gut. Let me just say, I've talked about both the oral microbiome and the gut a lot, to say the least. 10 Summits in, book, blah, 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 podcast. And... um my jaw was like on the floor with his hypotheses and theories and his research. He is an academic through and through. Dr. Steven Sandberg Lewis is amazing. So just FYI, what am I supposed to be mentioning, Clarissa? They, oh, and you need to email us your proof of purchase for getting the masterclass from Dr. Steven Sandberg Lewis. Thank you very much. Okay. And if anyone was here and you're like, oh, but I ordered it. Anybody who left actually, um, we will ask um, Evan's office for that.
I'll be in touch to start treatment in the UK. Need to get back to work first. Uh, at long last, they found you, Evan. Thank you all so much. We appreciate all of you who are on Facebook watching. We appreciate everyone who came live. And for those of you watching the replay, we appreciate you too. Evan, take care. Send my best to the family. Thanks, Siobhan. Okay. See you guys. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Much love. Thank you so much. Okay, everyone, that's a wrap. Take care. Um, it's so good to have you here.